Hi there. So, a um, couple of things. I had someone ask for tips for a new believer, and I shared a comment, but thought I'd share it. Um, and then also, uh, someone was talking about wanting to express Christ at work. They're with people. Actually, that's the one I really want to tackle, but um, they're with people all day at work, and they're hoping that they are expressing Christ. And I think it comes from the Colossians video I just did where I said, you are expressing Christ. Um, you know, when we are with people who know us in a familiar way, it's really important that we are authentically ourselves. We don't want to manufacture, people can sense when you're manufacturing something and hiding something. In other words, you're hiding the true self so that you can supposedly express a spiritual self or a spiritual, you know, Christ. Over the long haul, that ain't going to work. <laughs> um, and people can feel it. And that is the mode you enter into when you think, oh, I really want to express Christ in my daily life so the people around me can detect something different. Now, we can pray for that, but we have to be what it has to be real. Our, we have to be real. And what, what, what I said in that video is that we are expressing Christ. We are, this is a reality. You have to see that this is real. You are a branch that has been grafted into the vine. And you are a partaker of Christ. And you are someone who has the divine life and the divine nature. Now, not everybody can sense that. We are sons of God, according to 1 John. But it's not yet manifested what we shall be. But we know that when we see him, we shall be as he is. And we have that hope in us that we'll be transformed into his image when we see him. And that's really the culmination of all our aspirations to express Christ. Is that we will be glorified. That's our hope. And that hope has been put in us and it makes us want to be different. You know, we are groaning in this flesh. We groan desiring to be clothed with our habitation from heaven and to put off this, you know, flesh that seems to hide what we really are and, and limit us. Um, we have a treasure in an earthen vessel. That's what we are. We are a branch, but we have the life in us. And he doesn't change the branch to make it something different. He changes what's flowing through it. So the branch still maintains, even when it gets grafted into the vine, you know, grafting, like if you take a peach branch and you graft it into an apple tree, eventually it will produce apples, not because it looks different, but because the life from the apple tree is going to flow through that branch and produce its fruit. The fruit comes from the life not the branch and um, so we just maintain our characteristic we are just who we are good or bad if you're having a bad day and or a w bad week and you're not focused on Christ and you've got problems in your heart that need to be dealt with well that's what you are and it's better to be that in reality than Put on a phony facade that makes it look like you're in this, you're more spiritual or something like that, because that just repels everybody. Um, and the Lord desires truth in the inward parts. You know, we should just be who we are and grow in faith. Don't try to be something you're not yet. We are faith is something we're growing. We are growing in an appreciation of the reality of what it is we have in Christ. 
And what it is, is that we have been grafted into the vine. We are partakers of his life. We have his life throwing through us. And for us to live is Christ. That's a reality. We are a new creation. The new creation is that the old man was crucified, right? And we've been grafted into Christ. And now there is a new life flowing with new desires, uh, for God and for Christ and to express him. All those desires are genuinely from him and we hunger for his word. Uh, and we, we appreciate him and we love him. That's natural and normal and true. That's true of us. And we believe in him. That's true of us. And yet we have this flesh that we struggle with and we're not perfect and we fail and we're human and we're weak and we're mortal that's true too and we have sin that needs to be forgiven and you know it is forgiven but we need to deal with it um, and maintain our fellowship so we're not trying to be different we are trying to be what we are we are what we are and um to the degree that we can reconcile the fact that we are what we are with the fact that we see what we see in the Bible and believe it, we are going to uh, spontaneously express something different. There's just a, a humility there, um, a reality there, an authenticity there that people will eventually sense. And then so when it comes to long-term relationships where you have to be with the same person all the time, you do look for opportunities to witness, but as Peter said, you know, sanctify the Lord in your heart and always be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within you with meekness. The idea is that if you're with people all the time, they may sometime ask. We, you know, evangelism, I think, there's evangelism to strangers where you just feel led and you have to get in their face because it's the only time you're going to see them and you need to get the word out then there's people in our life who see us day in and day out they know we're different they know we believe things conversationally it comes out you know they see us they may or may not ask but it's not our job to push 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 this is my opinion maybe i'm wrong maybe tim henderson would say differently or uh an evangelist i'm not an evangelist I'm someone who's learned to be comfortable in my own skin. And I know that the people around me know what I believe. And maybe they think I'm a hypocrite. Maybe they think, uh, who knows what they think. It's not my job to control what they think. My desire is to have a thankful heart, a sanctified heart, sanctify the Lord in your heart. Where you're just, you know, growing in the knowledge of him and appreciating him. And then that calms you down and makes you steady and strengthens you and you have a note of joy. You do. That's real. That's ba It's a joy that's based on what you see in Christ. It's not you trying to be different, okay? I hope this makes sense. I, um, I feel uh, we try so hard. We really do sometimes. And that actually puts us in works. When you say, I want to express Christ, and I really want everybody around me to know, well, now you're focused on you and your performance. And then that demand becomes a law. Well, that's going to guarantee that you're going to be frustrated and not produce, or, or, per, yeah, you're not going to have a witness for Christ in that. You're going to be someone who's miserable and trying and weird. And, and I used to do that, you know. I remember I went to this party when I was a new believer and I thought, well, where's was I? Cause I was charismatic. Well, we have to have the joy of the Lord. So, you know, I went to this party cause I used to witness at parties all the time when I was first a believer. I, um, I was very zealous. Anyway, I went to this party and it was a friend of mine, my best friend. And I was standing in the corner and I was smiling like this, you know, and he looked at me and he goes, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and it was because I was trying so hard to project what I thought the joy of the Lord would look like that it became just a caricature. It was stupid. Um, and that was, you know, 
I had a zeal when I first got saved to witness people and did it all the time and didn't think about it. Then I started focusing on my performance in it. And God just, that was like the beginning of the end for me. God took me out of that whole path where now I'm not even thinking like that. I really, I'm not, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking about people and I'm praying for them and stuff and, you know. And the minute you say that, you go, well, I'm probably not playing as much as I should. And maybe I should be thinking of them more. That's law. No, be what you are right now. It is what it is. I'm as grown in Christ as I am, and I'm in concerned with others as I am based on how much maturity I have in life and how much I see in Christ. I don't want to have a performance that doesn't match where I really am. Because it's the authenticity. We worship in spirit and truth. There's an authenticity that is missing from Christians. And, uh, I mean, yeah, this is heavily loaded with my own opinion, obviously. But my opinion is informed, I believe, by grace over years of learning to relax in the Lord and just let it be. Um, but I have a much richer appreciation for what I am in Christ. I know that there's a fragrance of Christ. Whether people even know what that is or not, in every place is a fragrance of Christ as I sanctify him in my heart. What does it mean to sanctify him in my heart? My heart is full of thanksgiving. Remember back to Colossians, uh, talking about walking to walking according to the will of God, being pleasing in every good work, uh, filled with the full knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all endurance and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us for a share of the allotted portion of the saints in the light, who has transferred us out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of the beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. I don't know how not to say that whole thing, because to me, you start saying the first couple verses, and then all the rest want to come out because it's so good. And, you know... That is how to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord is just to be full of consciousness of what he's done for you in Christ and have a thankful heart. If you have that and then you're just you, it will make a difference in people. Those may not be the people that you get to see come to the Lord because of your witness. Maybe some other fervent evangelist will come and say the words, but if you can be authentic and sanctify the Lord in your heart and be ready to give an answer if they bring it up, you will be partaking in uh, their salvation. You know, you're sowing seed. And don't even think about it as sowing seed. Just be you and have a heart full of Christ. Okay, this is longer than I thought it was going to be. I got to go to the bank. Um, I'll get to that other message later.